So for an intermediate strategy, which really takes the Keyword Dominator Pro tool and combines it with bulk file automations, we are going to unleash Pay-Per-Click Dominator Pro, which is gonna be available to everybody here in the course. And I'm gonna bring in none other than the Pay-Per-Click master himself, Brett from FBA Excel. He's gonna walk through this tool, how to use it, how to set it up, and everything in between. If you've got questions as you start to put this thing to the test, just ping us in the Facebook group. Make sure to ping Paulo. Uh, he'll be one of the resident experts, and then others will jump in, like myself and Brett as needed. And hopefully as the community starts to use this tool more, uh, we'll have a bunch of experts in the space. So this is Brett explaining Pay-per-click Dominator Pro. All right, what's up guys? This is Brett from FBA Excel. Uh, this training video is gonna be actually on the uh, PPC Dominator Pro. I know I've got Keyword Dominator here pulled up, uh, but that's because the first step you're gonna wanna do before you start using PPC Dominator Pro is grab either, if you've already got the Pro version of Keyword Dominator, you can use that. Um, or if you're new and you want to just use the free version of the Keyword Dominator, you can hop in and download the recent version of that. And you need a, the recent version of Keyword Dominator because um, it's going to have a few new features that we'll talk about here in a minute. But um, we have some training videos already on Keyword Dominator, so I'm not going to go into the details of how to use that. PPC Dominator Pro looks like this when you open it up. Uh, essentially, when you log into the members area, you're going to need to go... Uh, find where it says Toolbox, you'll find the copy of PPC Dominator Pro uh, right here. You do need to have a free Google account. You can kind of read through these steps that'll be on the page um, and just sign up for a free Google account if you don't have one yet. Uh, but what you'll do is just double click on the PPC Dominator Pro and then it'll tell you to make a copy. Uh, you just click the button there and then that's gonna save it, save a copy to your Google account and you'll be good to go. When you open it up, you're gonna see uh, this setting screen here. And over here on the right, this is actually what I'm going to be going over. So this first phase is we're going to be talking about the onboarding of PPC Dominator Pro, which is what we're in right now. So kind of the first thing you need to do when you get in here is input your FBA Excel login and password. Um, I've already got one input. It's kind of hidden. But uh, if you ever need to check if your authorization status is working, you can come up and click Authorize Account. Uh, the first time you go to actually run any of the scripts, it's going to ask you for the authorization requirements. The other thing you can do is hit this one-time authorization. You only have to do this once. But you'll hit continue and then just choose the account. Since you made a copy, it'll have your email right there for your Google account. And you'll get a prompt here that says Google hasn't verified this app. Uh, this is just authorization to run the scripts. So go ahead hit uh, PPC Dominator Pro, you'll get a prompt here that says it needs access to like your Google Drive files and all that. If you're weary about any of this, just again, make a brand new Google account that you use for nothing but FBA Excel and it'll have nothing in there. But uh, the only reason this pops up is because we do have some connection to Google Drive and just some of the automation. So I just scroll down to the bottom then hit allow. All right, and then after that, uh, you should be good to go. Again, if you put in your login and password and you ever need to check if your account status is working, you can click that button there and it'll run a quick script and just verify that uh, it's synced to your account. If you get the finished script there and the Apex bundle, that's, that's one plan that the PPC Dominator works with. It'll, you can also have the PPC Dominator Pro uh, account type or any of the heist plans. Those will populate here and all work with, key, uh, with PPC Dominator Pro. So that's kind of the first step. Just make sure your account is authorized and hooked up to FBA Excel. Next step is we actually wanna make a Google Drive folder where we're gonna to use to manage our PPC Dominator files. That's both files from the Keyword Dominator that we can import into PPC Dominator and our PPC Dominator upload files that we're gonna to upload to Amazon and update our bids. So super simple, just um, I've got a training files here folder already set up. You can just literally right click, hit new folder. You can see I've already got one here, just call it like PPC Dominator exports or something like that. And all you're interested in is this ID here at the top. So you're just gonna copy that after the last slash and go back into the settings screen. And we're just gonna, if you hit control shift and then the letter V is in Victor, that pastes values in Google Sheets. So that's kind of handy. You got a link here if you ever wanna get to it quickly, but uh, I always save it in my bookmarks just as a quick way to get to it. So the PPC Dominator Pro menu, 
uh, should come up automatically like when I refresh it after you've done the, the one time authorization and you can see I um, just refresh the screen here you're actually gonna get a prompt for a password and it takes it a second to finish loading just kind of let it do its thing for a couple seconds here and you'll see an unlock PPC dominator if I go back to the tools or the toolbox uh, tab in the members area you'll find a password uh, somewhere on this page you can see right now it's set to one two three four so you're just gonna need to know that and you'll just plug that in here and as soon as you hit OK then you'll get a welcome screen and you'll see that the menu pops up if it ever doesn't pop up you can always click this little hamburger icon and it should pop up for you if that doesn't work uh, we've had a few users have some security settings set on their Google Chrome browser I download like Firefox or another browser and give it a try and usually that will do the trick if you're not able to get that menu to pop up or if it disappears for some weird reason it's usually a glitch with um, the Google Chrome installation on the user's computer so uh, but in order to kind of do what we need to do here to get started you're just gonna click onboarding and then this video you're watching right now is actually this one right here uh, but you'll click download onboarding reports and this is actually going to take you over to Amazon so you actually do need to be logged in before you execute this script and it'll take you right to where you need to go uh, but you'll see there's a few different windows here uh, actually just two so what we need is we need the fee preview report which if you scroll down and just click once right there and come back up here hit request CSV download and that'll initiate initiate a new download you just wait till that's done um, the CSV ver CSV version is what we need so let's pretend that this one's the one we need just so I don't have to wait for the other one to download uh, then you're gonna go to um, your Google Drive account and if you install the uh, there's a let's see here if, if you install uh, this free desktop app it actually syncs you can click there and it syncs your kind of local drive to um, Google Drive so you can quickly save files and um, grab files you need to straight from your Google Drive account so uh, if we go to my training files folder here you can just basically put it in here you can see I've already got one saved but you can just save it as fee preview I'm gonna cancel since I already have one um, and then once you have that you can actually just get out of that and let me open up this other one the other one we're gonna need is the all listing report so it's right there you'll just click that button and it'll download uh, and then you'll hit this download button and same deal and we're gonna go back to PPC dominator and the next step is we actually need to paste our all listing and fee preview report data so it's gonna give us a prompt there all right, and you'll see it's gonna take us to the screen and it's gonna be blank when you first open it up. Uh, but essentially all we need to do is now open up the two files. Just go to file import and find our training files folder. And we're gonna actually import these two down here. So I'll do the all listings first and you can just do insert new sheet, hit import data. All right, and the four fields we need from this guy is the SKU, and we'll go ahead and just, if you click once on A, and then put it after the SKU there, just let go. And then we also need the ASIN, actually that goes in between the two. And then let's do product ID type after that. That just tells us if it's an FBA or FBM. So you can come up here and click that little filter button, and then I like to sort this by Z to A. You can see I've got some FBM items here or SKUs, I'm just gonna worry about the FBA. So you can pull in FBA and FBM if you want. Uh, but I'm just gonna copy that, hit Control C, and you're gonna go back over to the Seller Central reports. And actually here, I've got that boogered up a little bit. It needs to be SKU, name, then ASIN. So I'm just gonna hop back. And so it's SKU, name, then ASIN. And then you can change actually the number threes if you wanna know if it's FBA, if you've got both. I like to uh, just do that and when we pull that in to the seller central reports you can hit control shift V again you can see that just dumps the data in and then you can go ahead and just delete this sheet and then we just need to do a similar thing with the fee preview report now go down to training files and fee preview hit insert new sheet import data 
all right and we actually only want the US metrics if you're selling in the US uh, so I'm going to make a filter there on dimensions and do Z to A then you can see inches stops right there so I'm just gonna go over here hold in shift and then just grab where it stops Control C and then we're gonna go over to seller central reports Control shift V all right, and there we go. We, we just want to make sure we don't accidentally override this BI column. You can see it pulls in our lowest prices. So uh, once we're done with that, with the data, we're good to go. You can just delete that. And we've pretty much knocked out the hard parts now in the onboarding phase. So last step on the onboarding, you'll just come up here. We've done this step here where we've pasted the uh, values. If you ever need to get back to this Seller Central Reports tab, you can either come up here, click here, or we've got a link here, add Seller Central Report data and the reason you'd want to maybe come back in here in the future if you add new products to your catalog and want to run ads using PPC Dominator Pro uh, you can always re-download your all listing report and just kind of override this data and if you click this sync products it's essentially going to take the data uh, from this sheet here and merge it across the system so um, that that's really the only application you would use this sync products button which I'm not going to use it in this video but um, that's you know this process we're doing right now just kind of adding our product data into the system you just kind of overwrite that all right so going back to the onboarding so now we're at the build products dashboard phase and just basically click this button you can see it's gonna make you a SKU dashboard so we just hit that and you'll see it just automatically pulls in our data there from our seller central report file and it's gonna give us a go ahead here in just a second all right, and there you'll get a prompt, just hit OK. And now we're pretty much done with uh, the onboarding phase. Now we can actually get into, uh, if I click over here and I'll open up the uh, PPC Dominator training. So right now we've input, input our credentials, we've created our Google Drive folder, done the onboarding sequence. Now we need to import our first bulk file. So uh, this, step here kind of gets into the same sequence you would use on a daily basis when you're optimizing your bids uh, just come up here to the menu click get bulk sheet and this is going to take you into the campaign manager where you can uh, download your first bulk file to import into the system again you need to make sure you're already logged into seller central uh, for this to automatically take you to this screen uh, but then what what you'll do is you'll deselect this campaign items with zero impressions and I like to, if it's your very first time, either do 60 or 30 days. I'm just going to go ahead and do 30 days. Uh, then you'll hit Create Spreadsheet for Download. And you can see it just takes it a second here uh, to finalize. And depending on how big your file is, it, it may take a little longer than others. But uh, in general, it's just a few seconds. So I'm going to uh, pretend that this one's ready to download. You'll just click on the download link once it finishes. Actually, if you get this error, I'm kind of glad this popped up. All you need to do is go over here to sponsored ads and hit bulk operations. And for whatever reason, when it refreshes, sometimes it doesn't sync quite properly. So uh, here you can see, just click download and it'll ask you where to save it in your Google Drive. Uh, if, again, if you've got this program installed it's super simple you can just come over to training files and you can see I've already got a bulk download sheet there but you would just name it you know I like to usually name it the date and then underscore or whatever um, but that's what you would do there and then just hit save I'm not gonna worry about it because I've already got one um, and then you can actually get out of here or I'm actually gonna leave it open because we'll upload our file once we're done right here so it's helpful just to leave that open all right, and then once we've got that, all we're gonna do is come up to File, Import. We're gonna find our training files, and you will find your bulk download. So there's my bulk download. Hit Insert New Sheet, hit Import Data. And this is just gonna take our bulk sheet PPC data and import it into PPC Dominator. You'll see here in a second, we're gonna get four tabs. We'll have the Portfolio tab, uh, Sponsored Products, Sponsored Brands, and then Sponsored Display. PPC Dominator actually only uses the sponsored products and some of the portfolio data, and it's actually gonna delete the other two automatically, but uh, we're gonna have future modules that are kind of add-ons for sponsored display and sponsored brands. Uh, if you get this prompt here, just hit wait. Sometimes it, depending if you have a really large 
uh, bulk file, which I think this test one I have is quite large, uh, you may get that prompt. But um, the other comment I'll make here is if you have a really big file, like uh, we're talking like 100,000 rows uh, or more, there is some scripts we have added that I'll go over here towards the end that are more performance-based settings. But um, you can see this file here that I've got is actually a pretty big one that I'm working with. So what you want to do in Google Sheets is basically wait for everything to kind of load, and you'll be able to tell when you can kind of click around when um, the cursor works like that. And then you've got this green line up here. Let that finish, and it, things will just tend to work better. If you ever get stuck and kind of locked out and it freezes, you can always refresh it. And usually it'll it'll be good to go after that. But sometimes since Google Sheets is a cloud-based platform and it's free, it kind of bogs down a little bit. But so right now we've imported our first bulk file. The next step is we need to initialize the bulk file, and this is really the second step as well in kind of your daily optimization, which I'll cover here quickly after we get this first one in in uh, in the works. But uh, just click that button it's going to do its thing automatically you don't need to worry about inputting any of your bid settings or anything like that yet this is just kind of our initial onboarding uh, bulk sheet import all right so once the initialization is completed you'll get this prompt here you always want to make sure in google sheets when you're out of a, a module pop up like this that that pointer finger comes up and you can hit ok and then this running script should turn to finish when it's completely done so just make sure you don't be clicking around until it says finish script. And once it finishes, you're pretty much good to go. Um, I'll go over kind of what we're looking at here uh, with the bulk file view in a few minutes. Uh, but first, I want to just kind of run through each screen and kind of give you an idea of what each is used for. Your settings tab has obviously the um, initial getting started credentials. We've got a setting here to toggle on and off the SKU dashboard bid settings. Um, and I'm going to go into more detail, so I'm just kind of glossing over what these are, you know, what's on each one. Uh, you've got some poor performing uh, filters here that you can quickly basically toggle your bulk sheet and navigate fast by clicking this button. And that pertains to uh, these inputs here. And you have the same type of deal for some top performer filters. Uh, that are right here again just to quickly navigate your bulk file then we've got a SKU dashboard where we're going to talk about the bid settings here in a bit but just know that uh, this kind of has your bulk file um, SKU level metrics as well as it's going to allow us to put in some SKU level bid settings the bid override table has kind of two purposes one it gives uh, the inputs for your account level bid setting which is really like the lowest floor in the precedence of bidding where you essentially set the bid settings for this one row and it'll if you don't have any higher precedent bid settings set it's going to fall back to these and optimize your targets for that but uh, this bid override table, the main purpose of it is to allow you to bid more aggressively on specific targets uh, that may be performing well or you maybe just want to rank better for uh, and have a strategy around. So that's kind of the intent. And you'll see how we fill this in here in a bit once we hop back over to the keyword dominator. But uh, just know that that's kind of the purpose here. And then the labs tab, it has two quick sort features. And then you've got a portfolio list here for reference. And then you've got three add insight tiles, which I'll show you how those work here in a bit as well. Uh, but that kind of gives you just a brief overview of the tabs. And then obviously after you do the initialization process, this is going to be your uh, bulk file view that has some nice um, additional columns here. This main one here, AC, allows you to uh, quickly filter by your SKUs, which you don't have by default. Um, so that's a good one to have. Obviously, you got your conversion rate, cost per click, and then I'll go over kind of how these other ones work here in a bit. But um, so that's, that's a quick overview. Now I want to actually hop back over to the Keyword Dominator and show you how uh, the Keyword Dominator and the PPC Dominator Pro kind of work together to allow you to specifically target um, certain targets, uh, mainly keywords, on the bid override table and will allow us to just, again, bid more aggressively for those. So. All right, so hopping back over into Keyword Dominator, I've actually got the pro version here, but the free version is gonna work the same way. Uh, you do need to go back into the members area and re-download Keyword Dominator if you don't have this newest version with the PPC Dominator drive folder ID uh, here. So if you don't have that, just again, go back into the members area, re-download it, and you'll have it here. 
uh, watch the training on the keyboard dominator for initializing the sheet but it's basically the same way we just did the ppc dominator just plug in your fbxl login and password and then you'll want to um, i'd recommend just using the, the same uh, google drive folder id that we made you can just have that and you can make new folders as well it doesn't really matter but uh, so if you haven't used Keyboard Dominator, again, watch the training on how you use that. Uh, if you have already become familiar with it, you'll, you'll know what you're looking at here. And um, what we're mainly concerned with is we need to identify the main targets that we want to really focus on in our PPC campaigns. And we're going to use this column X that's called Rank Targets. And you'll see if you hover over there, it gives an explanation. but. Um, essentially, we want to assign a numerical value with one being kind of our highest priority to, to uh, focus on down to whatever you want. I'd recommend maybe like, I don't know, 15 to 25 per uh, SKU. And one thing you do need to know is kind of which SKU uh, you're focused on right now. And, you know, it'll have the ace in here, but uh, you can hop back over to PPC Dominator Pro and go to your SKU dashboard if you're not sure. And the one I'm using right here is this one, so I'll just copy that. And the reason you need that is because once you identify the top targets that you want to pull into PPC Dominator Pro, you'll come up here to your menu and you'll notice there's a new feature here, Save PPC Dominator File. So you're just going to click on that when you're ready to create a, you know, a new PPC Dominator file and it's going to ask you for the SKU, so you just plug that in there and hit OK. And what this script's gonna do, you can see it's adding our top, whatever we had, 15 targets. And if we had in the search term impression and search term impression share rank data, it'd have that in there as well. But I think I just had Cerebro data in there for this one. Um, and you'll see it's just gonna save it. You'll get a success here, and then it'll actually just delete that file. But what it did is it basically took that file and you can see it saved it right there for, it named it the SKU. So we have that now, and what you can do now is hop back over into PPC Dominator, and what you're gonna wanna do is at this stage, go into this override uh, dashboard and just single click in B8, and you'll just go up to File, Import, and then find your training files and PPC Dominator exports. And actually, if, if they're not in here, what you need to do is you need to go to, to upload. Sometimes there's a delay and just click select file from your device. And if you have that program installed, then you just go to training files and PPC Dominator exports. You can see there it is right there. So you can just double click and then that'll just upload. And then we actually want to replace data at selected cell. It's a little bit faster. Hit import data. And you can see it basically just brings in the data. It's got our target here. Um, and then the SKU. Uh, and then we can go ahead and actually just click once on eight there and delete that header row. We don't need that. Uh, but you can start to see kind of what's going on. We've got these keywords here for this SKU that we're gonna want to bid more aggressively for. Uh, what you can do as well, anytime you import new targets into the bid override table, you can come down to bid overrides, hit sync metrics. All right, so I actually just went ahead and kind of fudged in some actual metric numbers here so you could get a better uh, idea of, of kind of what's going on. But uh, I want to go over how to set up your initial bid inputs now and just explain the order of precedence as clearly as I can. Uh, so what we've done to this point is we have, we've set up our SKU dashboard, that's over here. Uh, we haven't assigned bid inputs for each SKU yet, uh, but we also have set up our bid override table and we've got this single column here that's our kind of fallback default bid settings and those are going to be set with uh, just these fields here and then we've also started to import some targets from our keyword dominator that are going to have the highest precedence and kind of take uh, take precedence over essentially every other setting that we've got if we do assign uh, some some bid settings for these so the order precedence is your targets and then your SKU dashboard and then this account level settings is, is how it works. So in an effort to kind of come up with the best set of settings to get started for each account, what I recommend is actually going to uh, labs and then do insert tiles and then we're actually going to want to do uh, cost per click 
four. You can just do any of the three there. You can see I've kind of already been messing with these, but what this is gonna do, it's gonna look at your bulk file and it's gonna split out by match type the results for your cost per clicks, just kind of on average. And we just wanna know for each SKU, kind of what we're spending, what might be the highest amounts, and uh, if there's any that are a bit lower, and we can kind of toggle our settings that way. And I actually just look at, for each match type, I look at the averages down here to get kind of an initial default setting. So it looks like, you know, 50 cents is about the highest for exact, but we'd probably have some outliers. You can see here in orange, there's uh, for some ASIN targets for this SKU, it's upwards of maybe a dollar. Um, let's see if there's any other ones. That looks about the highest. So uh, where you want to start actually is your SKU dashboard, and there'll be some default kind of values in here. You know, you can toggle this back, and you, you could actually set it for each SKU independently based on, uh, you know, historical results. But honestly, to get started, it's faster just to kind of let the data run for a few days and see how it goes. So I'm going to drop that down to a dollar. I'll keep this at 25%. And one thing you can do... Uh, you can come up here, SKU dashboard, calculate profits, and this is going to pull in all your fee preview results for each SKU. You can import your landed cost of goods, and you can see if I put in like two bucks there, running a 5% coupon, or you can delete that. You're just interested in kind of what your gross margin is, because if you can stay under that with your ACOS, then you'll be profitable. Um, but you can kind of use you know this section if you want to regulate a little bit of your settings. Um, but what I... What I recommend people do is just kind of come up with some initial default settings that look good and just drag those down just to get started. And you can see how it just kind of copies everything down. If you ever do that and it increments by one, uh, just you can hit Control Z to back up and then just holding the Control key while you drag it down and it should work. So uh, Google Sheets can be kind of finicky there. Uh, but that's you know the SKU dashboard, and your each each time you optimize, what you can do is you can expand this section here and actually keep kind of a static copy of your ACOS, and that'll give you on a day by day basis. You can see here I did it for yesterday, and say I'm optimizing today, I can just copy this data here, and I can run up here, hit Control Shift V, copy that, and write the data in 10:14. And you just get a kind of a running history of how your ACOS is performing and you can make tweaks to your settings. Usually your target ACOS and the max bid, those are gonna be your two main levers that you can pull on the SKU dashboard. But just know that this is kind of, if you're using the SKU dashboard, this is where a lot of your targets are gonna be, uh, the, you know, their bids are gonna be set by. Unless you have targets that you've placed, you know, from the keyword dominator or just manually placed on this bid override table to bid more aggressive. So to bid more aggressively on these targets, the idea is you essentially want to um, have more aggressive or less conservative bid inputs than you have on your SKU dashboard. All the columns are the same, so you'll just wanna kinda of start with some default values and you can drag those down similar to how we did there. All those turn yellow once you have a field in either set by the bid override column. And this is just what this column does is if you have a setting there, a fixed dollar amount that's going to be a set bid for any for you know for that target specifically for if you have multiple match types like exact phrase and broad for this skew for this keyword it's going to set all three of those the same um, but what you can do here is, is handy is actually look at your cost per click column and if you always want to for example maintain top of search if you know you're getting top of search placements for these you can always just use this bid override column and set it higher than your cost per click uh, field, but what I tend to do in, in an effort to just kind of get rolling with the system is not use this column to start out with, or maybe I'll pick just a handful that I know I convert real well for and, and use this column. But I tend to use the uh, the ratio bid settings to start out with, similar to the SKU dashboard, but just raise your levels here. So if you know if I was targeting 25% on the SKU dashboard, maybe I'll hop it up to 35%. If I know you know my conversion rates are strong, ACOS is looking good, then I've I've got room to let it try to ramp up. And then I'll obviously ramp this number up as well. So if like a dollar was my highest, maybe I'll go a dollar twenty-five. And you can just drag that down. And I'll usually leave these pretty much the same. Um, but again, the idea is all of these now that we've picked off and put on this table are going to take precedence over our SKU dashboard and have higher aggressive bids. So hopefully we can you know, make more sales on these and scale up the account. Uh, one other filter I'll mention in the bulk filters here, and I'm gonna run down through these here in a minute, but is this multi-skew target. So if I just click on that, 
Uh, what you can do is after you optimize your bids, you can click on this and it's gonna filter your ops file for uh, just those targets that are in multi-SKU campaigns that um, are gonna be on that account level row. Um, so you can either drive these manually or just let that account level row kind of work its magic. But uh, just know that that filter's there and those will be driven by that account level row. All right, and then once you have your SKU level inputs set, your uh, target level input set, and your account level input set, uh, the next step is really, you know, there's there's some filters and things like that that you can uh, check out your bulk file and look more deeper into data, but uh, in its simplistic form, you can now just optimize your bids, and what it's gonna do, it's gonna take all the inputs that we've set along with the metric level, if I hit, uh, let's see, show all the metrics here in our bulk campaign file are columns S through Y here. It's just gonna look at these metrics and take the inputs we've set at the different levels. And depending on you know what our ACOS is and conversion rates and all that, uh, it's really going to use a formula to recalculate based on what our current bid is and then set a new optimized bid uh, and it's gonna just do that automatically. And to do that, you just come up here and click this button. Before I do that though, I do wanna kind of circle back and just explain a little bit more around how the keyword dominator ties into the PPC dominator. And essentially, if you hit this plus button up above column C, you'll see all the uh, keyword dominator data that gets pulled in. So you got the search volume, you've got your organic rank, if you're tracking any alpha ASINs, um, and then you've got kind of some additional Cerebro metrics here. And then if you had in your keyword dominator your search term impression share and rank, it would pull that in as well. So the idea is you, you'd have a keyword dominator file for each of your SKUs, and then you'd save that SKU file like we did earlier in the video for each one of those, import them in, you know, just in sequential order down here. I'd put the next one there, then the next one below it so on and so forth, you'd have more aggressive bids for you know, each of these targets, and then you could potentially, uh, you know, you may wanna delete some off of here after you look at your organic rank. If you're in like position one through five, say for example, you may not need to uh, you know, boost your PPC spend for those targets. So it's as simple as just right clicking on any that you wanna remove, hit delete row, and then if you remember, if, if it's not on this list, it's gonna fall back to your SKU dashboard settings, and then uh, if it's not a SKU level uh, related target, so if it's like a multi-SKU campaign or something like that, then it'd fall back to this account row. So hopefully you're getting a better understanding of how that works, but if it is on this, bid override table as a target, the idea is you can use these metrics here from the keyword dominator to, you know, maybe you wanna sort for the highest search volume and be more aggressive on those than you are for lower search volume. So you can kind of come up with your, with your own strategy from that standpoint and you can just hide these columns when you're not using them. Again, you can use this bid override column if you wanna to stick to the top of search and if you wanna manually check for your top of search placement, you can always come over here and select these pictures and right click and hit open links. And it's actually gonna take you to this search term on Amazon and you can just manually check throughout the day that you know your product is staying there if, if you do wanna stay top of search. So um, that, that for exact campaigns is a great way to boost your organic rank and this, this override table is just kind of a way or method you can think of to kind of keep a close eye on these targets and just really move them in the right direction. So. You know, that's why I wanted to cover there. And when you're ready to actually optimize your bids, you're just gonna hop up here, hit optimize bids. It's gonna take you uh, over to your bulk file after I hit yes. You can see this is using the revenue per click times target ACOS uh, bid formula. So I'm not gonna go a whole lot into the bid formulas, but just know that it's using your metrics at a target level for each target. It's looking at your revenue per click. Hopefully there's a conversion for those already and multiplying that by your target A cost that you're setting in your bid settings. If there's not a conversion yet, then it's gonna use you know, some of these other settings like the uh, impression limits and up bids to hopefully get your, your bid up higher uh, till you get a conversion. But I'm gonna hit yes, and this will hop you back into your bulk file here. And what you'll see is in column AG here, you'll see this is gonna fill in, and then actually it's gonna overwrite our max bid column right after that, and then it'll give us a finished notification. So it's got a few things here we can do. 
uh, but just hit OK. All right, and then once that happens, you're pretty well good to update your upload file, and you're just gonna click Create Upload File, hit Yes, and this is actually gonna create a formatted file, save it to your Google Drive folder that you specified on the Settings tab, and we'll use that then to upload back to Amazon, and it'll have all of our bids adjusted based on the uh, settings that we input. All right, it says New Bulk File Added, you hit OK. And if you see, if I come back here to my PPC Dominator exports, you've got a sponsored products upload file. Uh, that is the file that you actually just come back here, you hit choose file, and we would go to our PPC Dominator exports. I'm already there, just double click that. Once you double click it, you gotta hit um, whatever that choose button, I think file changes to, uh, maybe like upload, and then you click that, and then it actually uploads it. And then you'll get kind of a history down here. Uh, where once it's done uploading, you'll get a successfully processed changes. And that means you've updated all of your bids. So um, I know this initial kind of onboarding and kind of learning the bid settings is a bit um, exhausting and can be overwhelming, but just know that the actual process of optimizing your bids on a daily basis is as simple now as going through these four steps and it literally should take you less than five minutes. So you click this button, it's gonna hop you here. Uh, you deselect that, select your date range, 30 days, hit create spreadsheet, download, save it to your Google Drive, hop back in here, import it, init click initialize bulk file, it gets you into this view. Then if you're ready for the optimized bids stage, if you want, you can tweak some bids settings, like say you come in here, or before you hit the optimize bid button, this, that's the time you'd wanna make any tweaks either to your SKU dashboard setting or your target level settings. And again, this is gonna be where a lot of your spend is gonna be coming from if you're trying to scale up certain targets. So you know, pay attention to this. You can always uh, sort this A to Z and it'll, it'll show you what your best A cost is. But uh, we've made quite a bit of progress here on the SOP, just hopping back. Uh, we've imported our keyword dominator file, set our target level inputs. We've optimized our bids for the first time. Uh, just briefly went back over the four-step process. Again, after you're, you've made your tweaks and you're ready to go, the last step is just creating that upload file. And again, should take less than five minutes. Uh, bulk sheet overview, that's again what this main uh, view is. No, in, bulk, in Google Sheets, you can always adjust the resolution up here just to kind of see everything. But uh, the record type, that's a pretty important column. It will show you the campaign level is kind of your highest tier, then your campaign by placement. So you can see, actually, there's a feature here if you do performance settings, add headers. And for those of you who haven't used bulk sheets, this gives you a little bit more clarity. Essentially, every black row is a new campaign. Um, and you can see it's got kind of a, a consistent structure. You've got a campaign column, then you've got your three campaign placement columns, which you go over here, you can see top of search, rest of search, product pages. Then you've got an ad group column, ad level column, and then you've got all your targets. And you, depending on if you have any uh, negatives in the campaign, they'll show up over here in this uh, match type column as negatives. But uh, important column here, record type, you know, you can essentially sort and uh, filter for specific things. So like if I wanted to uh, just change the campaign budget, for example, I'd hit clear there, hit campaign, hit OK, and it would filter out just my campaign level rows where you can see that's the only one that's got the campaign budget and I can just quickly change that there. Uh, one filter, if you've ever uh, got a filter applied, you can always just click bulk filters and actions, hit show all, that's gonna, gonna take you back to uh, your default kind of view. And if you've got a big bulk file, these you know conditional formatted columns will slow things down a bit. So I'm actually gonna take that off. You just go back and hit uh, remove headers and that'll take those black lines off. Other columns, you've got your campaign ID. You don't need to worry much about that. Campaign name, we went over campaign daily budget. Portfolio ID, if you ever wanna quickly kind of reorganize your campaigns into portfolios, you've got on the labs tab here, a portfolio reference. The ID is what you actually want to plug into those fields. Uh, just know that those are just campaign row level uh, inputs. You can see that it's, it's only in the campaign, so that's how you would uh, quickly change that. Campaign start date, don't need to worry about that. 
Targeting type, don't need to worry about that. Usually ad group type, don't need to worry about that after it's initially set. Uh, we do have a flex campaign builder if you're interested in quickly building out campaigns and uh, Apex as well is more of the agency level PPC tool. This is PPC Dominator Pro, which is a little more entry level, but uh, you can check Apex out as well. The max bid column, this is a pretty important column. This is gonna be where your optimized bids are gonna be input. Um, so you can kind of get a before and you know after effect here by uh, you know going down to some of these converted targets and you can see the original bid is going to be a carbon copy of when you first import your bulk file. Uh, so this column A in is never going to change. It's always going to be exactly how it was when you first uh, started the optimization sequence that you're working on. Then you've got your cost per click. That's what, you know, over the date range you specified what you're converting at, your conversion rate. Uh, this red column here is only going to show up once you click on the optimize bid button. So that's going to be what your new, uh, you, you know, your new bid is going to be set to and that's also going to override. You can see it's, it's copied it into this max bid field. So once you create your new Upload file, it's gonna use this value. One other nice thing you can do after you do click the optimize bids, if you wanna know just the ones that changed, you just click this review bid changes, and it'll give you a short list of all the ones that have different values between column A in and column A G. So you've got your keyword and product targeting. This is gonna be where your keywords or your ASINs, if you're doing product ASIN targeting. Uh, you've got your match types, your SKU level, uh, this is just for the ad rows, so there's actually a better column that PPC Dominator Pro adds, and it's a single SKU. So you can, what's nice here is you can come over here, and if you hit clear, and you could pick just one of your SKUs, and if you hit OK, then that's just going to show you the targets associated with that single SKU. So it's a, definitely an added benefit of using PPC Dominator. You can't do that in the default uh, bulk sheet. Then you've got your campaign status. This is gonna be either enabled, paused, or archived, and that's gonna be at the campaign level. Ad group status, same deal, and then the keyword status um, is, is right here. So if you ever wanna pause just one keyword, and with PPC Dominator Pro, you would do this potentially if you're using the poor performers filter. So if I click this button, for example, we'll see if any of them meet my criteria I have set. Okay, so what that filter did, it basically looked at my settings tab here and looked at these uh, preset inputs I had for just targets that aren't performing well. And you can see most of these, it looks like they got flagged for, uh, you know, this 26 got flagged for the spend. It's potentially, some of them got flagged for the click-through rate. It looks like, you know, clicks, that one probably got flagged. But none of these have orders. They're not doing very well. Uh, what you do is just come in here and you change this to paused like that and then you would just drag it down so a little bit of a manual step here apex has a lot quicker ways to address these type of things but again you can check that out if you're interested uh, but once you've got that kind of underway you know anytime again you're in the bulk bulk sheet view you can always come up here and click show all that's going to take you back to the default view you don't need to worry about if you've made any changes and you um, you haven't optimized yet you can always go back hit optimized bids and it'll it'll uh, kind of reset your file automatically for you so you don't need to worry about any issues with that just to kind of finish off the bulk sheet overview you've obviously got your metrics columns right here which these are what are used in addition to your bid settings to recalculate your bids you know each target has their own metrics and performance data so it uses that plus your bid settings to recalculate and kind of optimize everything that's how it works and then you've got we went over your single SKU column your optimized bid column conversion rate and uh, cost per click those are two pretty solid columns to pay attention to and that's basically it for your bulk sheet. This is, again, all of your campaigns you're running, every target on one sheet. So that's kind of the beauty behind this platform. Custom top performer filters, I covered that briefly. These are the filters associated with these inputs here. And the idea here is you can just quickly use these filters here to see uh, you know, what your top targets are in your account. Uh, maybe these are some that you'd wanna move to uh, the target level bidding and bid more aggressively for so uh, you, you can click that button it's gonna filter out your database here one thing I like to do you know some of this demo data is a bit screwed up so it's 
Well, no, it's it's all right. Never mind. Uh, you'll click orders and you can click Z to A, and that'll just kick all of the higher order targets to the top. Again, our our uh, inputs that we had on our settings for our top targets had a A cost threshold, so um, you can obviously change these if you want to either get more stringent on that or maybe open it up a little bit more. You can. Top placements, again, this is just for identifying quickly what's doing well, what's not. So you hit this and it's gonna show us what our higher top of search placements are and you'd wanna maybe gear your bidding towards uh, focusing more on the top of search for these targets as opposed to product pages. So you can kinda make some segmented tweaks there. So you can see we got four here that, again, if you go here to top of search, you can see that I've got 24 orders here and the next highest placement is my product page, which is only one. So um, again, you got your cost per click here. You've got your target. You know what it is. So, um, and again, your target is going to be this column here under keyword. All right, lab insights. Just briefly here, I know this video is getting long, but you can hop over here, PPC Dominator Pro Labs. You've got three insight tiles. So I'm going to start with maybe like a spend insight. So you just click whichever metric you want to see. It's going to go through your bulk file and just quickly populate some um, match type level reports that you can use for analysis. You can use to clean up your account. You know, I'll, I'll kind of show you one really nice way to um, optimize your account if it's gotten really out of whack here. So you know, this is showing me all my spend. Um, and then you know your SKUs here, your match types up here. This is broad, exact phrase, ASIN targets, automatic. Uh, one thing that's, that you can do, and I'll just kind of do a quick demo here. If I go up to uh, insight tile number two, do ad group breakdown. This is actually gonna show me all of the ad groups, uh, the, the quantity of ad groups that I have for each SKU in each match type. And then what I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna uh, create kind of a static report just with a single click and then I'm going to show you how to do kind of a Pareto principle to quickly pause some targets that just aren't doing well and eating up some of your uh, your ad spend. So you can see it's building out the report here real quick. Just got to give it a second. All right. And then once it builds it out, what you can do is actually if I come down here to where it says 634 and I double click on that, uh, it's just going to take a second and it's actually going to build me out a static file of all the data associated with this report table. So I just built that out. Uh, make sure when you go to clicking around again that you kind of wait for Google Sheets to do its thing. Sometimes this process here kind of lags a little bit, but you're going to go up and click on orders. And if you click once on this filter, and I'm going to click Z to A. All right, and I'm a single click on column V there. So if I go down, you can you can see I've got almost 2,000 orders over the past 30 days. Uh, it's actually 1,900, so I'm gonna do 1923 times 0.8, and that's about 1,500 orders. So now I just wanna know which targets are associated with those 1,500 orders. I can just hold in shift, and I actually got lucky there. So 15, 13, I'm gonna go all the way to seven. So basically 80% of all of my orders are coming from only uh, 67 targets. So after seven, you can see I've got almost I've got almost 1,500 rows that really aren't attributing to sales. And from a spend standpoint, you can also check that um, over the past 30 days, I've spent about uh, almost a little over $2,000 on those targets. So. Let's say I just wanted to really clean up my account fast and just focus on what's working and I'm gonna pause all the rest of this stuff. So uh, what you can actually do is let's focus on the stuff we wanna keep and you're gonna go over here to the campaign column and use another feature of PPC Dominator Pro. So I'm gonna hold in shift and just get all the campaign names here. I'm gonna go back to labs. I'm gonna use this campaign quick sort. So I just click once there in L6. Control Shift V to paste the values, and that just pastes all of the campaigns there that I want to keep. All right, so what you do now is come up here to Labs, and you're going to go to Campaign Quick Sort. We're actually going to show everything that's not on the list because this is going to give us the bulk view of all the campaigns that we're wasting our ad spend on, not the ones that are on our list. If we click Show on List, that would give us the list of everything here. So uh, Labs, Campaign Quick Sort, Show Not on List. 
And then once that finishes, what you can do is we're going to go to record type. And if you recall, the campaign level, if we just filter by that, um, we can just do a quick double check here. We said it was like 2300 bucks. Um, let's see. So the reason it's showing higher here is it's actually showing some paused ones as well that are already paused. Uh, which the report we were looking at before was just showing what was currently enabled. But you can see about $3,000 worth of ad spend uh, versus the 2300 So the idea here is you can quickly pause these campaigns. And you can see that this test data has already been through this process once. But all you need to do is change the campaign status because that's what we've got pre-filtered here, the campaign row. Um, and you'll just basically, a quick way to do it is copy that. Hit control shift down it'll take you all the way to the bottom control v and that paste pause in there and now when we upload our bulk file when we're ready all of these campaigns that were just really causing extra wasted ad spend and not really converting into a lot of sales at least in the top 80 percent uh, then they'll be paused and you can focus that budget on you know improving different targets and things like that so that's kind of the idea you can again just quickly hit uh, show all if you want to get back to kind of the default view. All right, and then the obviously the insight tiles you can use to assess any of those PPC level metrics that you want. The campaign sort and the target sort. The target sort works identical to the campaign sort example we just did, except you can do uh, specific keywords. So let's say I have a keyword list that I know maybe I want to get on the bid override table. Here you can. Um, I don't know if I have those keywords in here, so let me just pick some I know are here. So let's say I just want to show these here. Um, you'd come back over here, Control Shift V, PPC Dominator Pro, Labs, Target Quick Sort, Show on List. This is just going to show me these keywords for any of the, um, you know, any of the targets that are using them. All right. So that you can see I've got multiple SKUs in here because this is demo data using those targets, but it's also showing the negations. So you can just quickly negate those if you want. Um, but just to show you that it's working, you can see fishbowl drinking, glass, weed bowls, grill sponge. If we go back here, you've got grill sponge, fishbowl drinking glass. All of those are the same. So that's basically how that works. You just quickly use this feature to sort your bulk file and again when you're adding keywords to your bid override table the target goes here but you also need to specify the SKU so that's how you can kind of segment it uh, if needed so all right and I've got a couple other features here I was going to go over but I'm going to save those for another video if you do have any performance related issues when you import your bulk file um, I do have some scripts here for removing some um, extra rows that may not be needed in your analysis and optimization. So uh, hopefully this video helped you guys out and kind of get started onboarding and get a basic idea of how the system works. Obviously there's different operating procedures and methods you can deploy using this system. The kind of possibilities are endless, but um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to support and I'll help you out as best I can. Thanks guys. See ya.